Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be seeing if we can get this little Tyco Santa Fe 040 switcher running again. I picked this thing up uh, off of eBay really cheap. I got it in a lot with five other locomotives. I can't remember the exact price, but I think I paid the equivalent to like five bucks or something like that. So really not too bad a deal for this locomotive. Uh, the only catch is that it uh, obviously doesn't run and it's uh, definitely seen better days. So uh, it's going to probably need a little bit of work before we can get this one running again but I'm confident that with a bit of work we can get it running again which is really what matters and uh, overall uh, it's uh, pretty much intact which is what I look for when uh, buying junk locomotives it's missing parts and stuff like that but uh, all the uh, motor and drive system appear to be there so I, I think we'll be able to get this thing going um, it was unresponsive when I very first uh, tested it out so I suspect it has a wiring problem but it could be any number of things only time will tell but in any case, why don't we uh, take this thing over to the track, uh, give it some power, uh, see what it does, see if we can find out anything else about it. And uh, yeah, then we'll go from there to see if we can get this little thing riding the rails once again. Let's get started. All right, so we're now just going to test out our little 040. It's probably just going to do the same thing as it did last time, but I always like to test these things out before I go about working on them. So we'll give this thing a little bit of power and see if it does anything. So there's uh, 9 volts in the track right there. And uh, as we can see, just as it did last time, uh, we've got uh, a light on the inside, which means uh, the unit is picking up power. But I'm not hearing anything from the motor. It doesn't make uh, any vibrations or anything when I tried to uh, move it. And uh, most importantly, we're not seeing uh, really all that much in the way of current draw. The little bit of uh, current draw you see is just from the light bulb. So it's not shorted or anything. It's just not taking its power, at least as far as the motor goes. So uh, I still guess it's an electrical issue, probably with the wiring. But like I said, it could be any number of things. So only uh, opening this thing up will uh, reveal exactly what that is. So uh, yeah, let's take it over to the workbench and crack it open, see if we can figure out what is preventing this thing from running. All right, so let's crack this thing open. It should be pretty easy, because unfortunately the rear clips have broken off, so we've only got the uh, front ones to open up, and uh, that shouldn't be too hard. Really all we need to do is just uh, kind of pry that open and uh, do the same on the other side, which is literally the exact same process. And uh, then we just lift that out, and uh, yeah, just like that, we are inside the unit. Now, uh, what, what we see when we first open it up is, uh, well, first of all, I guess uh, we've got uh, one potential source of the problem, which is that this spring is not pushing up against that brush, uh, which could be why the motor is not starting. So uh, that's probably a good place to start. So we're just going to uh, force that kind of up into there. And then we just, uh, while that's out, we want to force that spring back around there. And uh, now that will apply pressure to the uh, piece which holds the brush in place. And that could be the reason why this motor wasn't kicking. Another thing I wanted to check out is what's going on with this light. Um, this wiring all looks really weird. I... Yeah, the weird part is it looks like the wire goes through here and then connects back up to itself, even though this wire is also feeding into it. So we got three wires, so there's some weird wiring going on, but. The light's working, so and there was no short, so I, it can't be too bad. I just find it strange. Um, but uh, we'll try to kind of turn this light around so at least it's facing out the front as it should be. I don't really know how this would have came into play. I have a feeling I'm not the first person to have opened this unit up before. But in any case, let's try to get that sorted out. And uh, there we go. So we're going to put this back on. We'll see if it starts. Even if it does, I definitely want to do a bit more work on it because I'm sure the uh, commutator is probably dirty. But uh, in any case, uh, we'll at least see if that uh, fixed the problem with the motor. If it can start up, then uh, it's only uh, good news from there. So second go with the model here. Let's see if she'll fire to life now. And uh, once again, we've got the light on. Now in the right direction-ish, but... Nothing from the motor, so I guess that didn't uh, correct it, unfortunately. So uh, we'll just have to look elsewhere for the problem. So as it would turn out, I guess that brush problem was uh, not really the problem as much as it was one of the problems. So uh, we're just going to have to keep looking uh, to see if we can find whatever is preventing that motor from uh, starting. Uh, but this time we're going to do something a bit different. I've got a uh, controller here. And uh, we're going to uh, just take some test leads and see if uh, we put power directly to each sides of the motor if it will start. 
Oh, son of a gun, it started. So uh, there's definitely an electrical problem, uh, which is preventing power from getting uh, from these wheels to the motor. And we know that power is getting into the unit to some extent because that light's working. So there's something there's something missing in this equation that we need to uh, fix. I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, we'll have a look over it and uh, we might just find the problem. I have uh, a bit of a feeling though that it might it might have something to do with this side because one side should be connected to the body of the locomotive, the other side should be wired to it. And there's a chance that it's not. So let's look around there. So I got these leads out and I've just been playing around with the wires. Now check this out. If I connect uh, one wire to the body of the locomotive or the ground and connect one to this side, you see we got sparks, so it's a short circuit. So we know that this brush is connected to the ground. But uh, if we connect it to this, you can see the engine starts, but there are no wires or anything connected to that other brush. So at some point, somebody removed something that connected to that brush, and that's why the motor isn't getting power. Now, I find this whole kind of wiring system here with the light really weird, and I have a feeling that some part of this eventually, at one point, it used to go here, and uh, somebody changed it at some point. So we're going to look there for problems, because honestly, it's not going to surprise me if that's where they lie. And, uh, I mean, well, look at that. That's got a, that had to have connected, that had to have connected up to uh, that brush at one point. I don't see a soldering spot on it, but at some point this must have, uh, must have gone through, like maybe there or something like that. Who knows? All right, so now that we have an idea of what the problem is, we're going to uh, try to fix it up. I don't know exactly where this wire was soldered onto on here, but we're just going to uh, solder it directly to the brush because that should solve the problem. Uh, this might not be the best way to go about it, but I honestly uh, can't think of a, a different way off the top of my head. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and uh, put some solder on the end of the brush and solder that wire to it. It is something that uh, needs to be done kind of carefully because... Uh, the way a brush works, it has to have a specific amount of pressure on it. You don't want any wires that you attach interfering with that. But in this case, I don't think it will, especially with how I plan to do it. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, try to get this on. It is uh, awkward to work with. This is not a great wire, but it should be okay. So I ended up uh, rewiring this whole thing. The wires that were in there were just not that great, so it should be good now. So we're going to uh, reassemble this unit, and uh, why don't we uh, take it over to the track and see if it will spring to life now that we've uh, got all that wiring sorted out. Well, here we go. Moment of truth. Let's get this thing set up on the track and give it some power. And I saw a bit of current draw for a second there. Oh, oh it's going. Let's give it full power. It's trying. This might be the first time this thing has run in maybe a decade, who knows. Yeah, it's kicked out again. I'm going to try uh, doing a little bit of cleaning on the wheels and other metal contacts, see if we can get uh, all those sorted out. That might uh, fix it. So I decided to remove one of the brushes to have a look at the commutator, and uh, this thing is soaked in oil, and it looks to be relatively fresh. So somebody was inside this locomotive relatively uh, recently, probably within the last couple years, trying to fix this thing, and uh, evidently that was one of the things they tried, which was oiling the commutator. It uh, obviously didn't fix the problem, but uh, I don't think it's burned too much, so if we clean that off, it should be okay. All right, so moment of truth. Let's see if all that cleaning has paid off. Got all that oil off the commutator, and I also got the uh, wheels all uh, shined up too, so uh, that's nice. Now let's see if we give this thing some power. She'll go. Hey, look at that! Serenity! It's a, uh, it's a runner. It doesn't seem uh, too bad. Yeah, I don't know if I uh, did something to the light while I was cleaning it, but uh, it doesn't seem to be on anymore. But in any case, the engine's running, and uh, even fairly consistently, so that's not too bad. Let's have a look over here on our controller. Not drawing too much current. That's, uh, that's good news. Let's see, how's our low speed? That doesn't sound great. Well, definitely could be better, but heck, it seems to uh, seems to run okay. It's definitely happier at the higher speeds, but 
In any case, we turned this thing into a runner, so that's, uh, that's a far step from uh, where it was at the beginning of this video. So, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Very nice. Now, I don't usually do too much in the way of cosmetic work on these locomotives, but this one is in really bad shape. It looks uh, even worse in person than it does here on camera. I don't know if uh, maybe this was uh, drawn on with a pen or something, but there are all sorts of marks. I have a feeling with a little bit of rubbing alcohol, we might be able to get this looking a bit better. It may strip some of the paint off, but honestly, I don't think we can make this thing much worse. So why don't we have a go? Wow, look at that. It's like a brand new engine under all that grime. Just look at the uh, look at the difference. That's absolutely incredible. Well, it's uh, well, this part's going to be satisfying for sure. Oh uh, yeah, look at all that just going right away. I guess that was a pen mark or something, but whatever it is, the alcohol is chewing through it. Let's get those fine spots. This thing was really dirty. Like it, it didn't look good, but I didn't realize it was this bad. I'll just uh, dry that off. Well, I'll call that an improvement. I'll get the running boards and whatnot now. Well, here it is after that cleaning. I have to say it came out looking uh, a lot better than I was expecting. The paintwork uh, underneath all that grime was in uh, far better shape than I would have imagined. You can see now that it's all clean, uh, the paint even has a bit of a sheen to it, which is kind of incredible. And uh, ultimately, we were able to uh, turn this engine into a uh, runner once again, which I'm uh, pretty happy about. It just needed a little bit of work, and uh, yeah, it's a pretty decent engine again. It's far from flawless, don't get me wrong, but uh, it's a good step in the right direction, which is really what matters at the end of the day. And uh, overall, I'm very happy with it. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed. With that, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.